right, everybody. I believe, uh, I think I'm recording. Let me double check. Whoops. Uh, yeah, it's recording. All right, my bad. All right, anyway, um, uh, when y'all see this, it's going to be my birthday, August 15, 2018. So, uh, happy birthday to me. Thank you very much. If you wish a happy birthday, um, I want to run through this as quick as possible. This is going to be long. <clears throat> um, the thing about it is I want to teach you all uh, the problems with shipping and everything you're going to run into. Fancy screen, isn't it? Kind of like the... I spent a lot of time on this slideshow, so... All right, Scott, all right. All right, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get to it. I'm going to run through it as quick as I can, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Whoops. Um, the contents aren't really that important here. Um, I'm just going to run through each section, you know, how to price everything, how to have a backup plan if it goes wrong, have a very clear shipping policy, how to pack, tracking and customer service. All right. So ugh, let's rock and roll here, people. All right. <clears throat> how to figure out shipping cost. Well, there, there's a lot to this page right here. Okay. Um, first of all, Let's just deal with the packaging, okay? I use uh, USPS because, first of all, they're, they have a medium flat rate, a large flat rate. Um, I like to use their priority 7x7x6 seven by seven by boxes. Um, and, you know, one um, on there you can see the prices, you know, 1285 Now, this is a commercial flat rate, so if you have PayPal or eBay or whatever you can do the commercial rate otherwise you know you gotta trudge to the post office and do it all yourself um, so I'm not gonna get into all this if you all want a more specific driven on how to price it um, outside of flat rates um, you know reasonably you can ship anything from probably one to five pounds keep in mind water weighs a little bit people um, so you know, you um, you know, I periodically measure everything. I find typically in a seven by seven by six, if I do the styrofoam, um, you know, on the inside, I do one bag, a trio, usually in a six inch by eighteen inch bag, um, and I, uh, you know, about one third water uh, to two thirds air. It runs right about a pound, a pound one ounce, okay, roughly. I've never had a problem, because the problem is if you go over a pound, they want to try to round you up to the next level, right? I've never really had a problem an ounce one way or the other. Now, you're going to probably have problems if you put on there, um, you know, it's one pound, and it's really one pound eight ounces. I wouldn't deal with that. But <clears throat> that's just to give you an idea. Um so we're going to kind of go on down the list here. What do you need? Now, let's say you figure the pricing part out. And, man, that could be a whole video in itself. I, I really don't want to go there right now because the way USPS breaks down everything, it's like a 28-page document on shipping everything from bubble mailers to flat rates to priority, and then it depends on the zone it's going to. There's a million ways you can try to price it out and get cheaper rates, okay? So let's go on down. What do you need? You need insulation. Now, I use something called Insofoam from Home Depot um, just to line the box with, and then newspaper, you know, stuff in there or whatever. Um, heat packs, code packs, we'll get into that maybe later. Um... Uh, I don't really think cold packs work, to be honest with you, because they're never going to last two to three days that you need them to last. They'll be completely melted. You certainly don't want to use dry ice or anything else. Plus, you could have a problem with them. Um, you know, obviously, they're going to, you know, sweat a little bit, and they could drip all over everything. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're going to need shipping bags. Now, if you're doing this at home, you are probably going to need a laser printer. Why do I say laser because a thing of toner is pretty darn cheap. You're printing them black and white. If you're trying to use a bubble jet, well, now, you know, it's probably mixing 
your color cartridge with your black cartridge. I know this because I worked at Lexmark for 12 years in tech support. I specialized in bubble jet printers, inkjet printers, uh, laser printers. I was a third level support. Um, you know, cost per cost, you want a laser printer, okay? Um, it's definitely preferred. It's cheaper in the long run, and again, you're not printing shipping labels with color, okay? Now, if that's all you have to get by with, by all means, start everything, you know, as you can. You know, when I'm going to go down through the, you know, rates and everything down here, start as you can, because what you do is after you've actually made profit, then you can go back and invest in some of this stuff. You absolutely need shipping bags. You absolutely need insulation. You need something to put inside, which I use ne a newspaper. I know a lot of people might use, uh, what do they call that other stuff? Um, there's the insulation made out of paper. I forget what it's called. Um, you got to buy that in bulk, okay? So you don't absolutely have to have a printer, but keep in mind, if you go to the post office, you're not going to get a commercial rate uh, because they're going to charge you the normal rate. So up here where it says medium, $1,285. Uh-oh, let's go back. $1,285, if you go to the post office, it's probably $1,360, $1,380. I, I can't remember because um, I print off everything here and I drop everything off at the post office. Okay, so not needed. I would highly recommend business cards. I'll show you down here. They're cheap to get, you know, and the reason being because of whether you ship on eBay, uh, 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 you know, Aqua bid, whether you're going through Facebook, you know, it's really cool to have, you know, a way for a customer to get a hold of you. And here's another thing I like about it eBay charges, you know, uh, rates, right? And so, like, every time you sell something, they take X amount. Well, if the con uh, co customer contacts you directly, well, you can bypass all that crap. So, hopefully, the business card, if you have your email, your phone number, and I would highly recommend a business number, you know, for the phone number. Um, there are many ways to get business numbers. Some of them free, some of them not. Um, you probably want to go that route because I don't know if you'd really rather people know your personal phone number. I don't do that outside of local clubs or people that I really, really know because they can contact me through the business number. They can page me or text me through the business number and all that. I can get into that in another video. You definitely need conditioners. I use Prime and Stress Guard because you want to add them to the containers before you ship them. Uh, Prime will... Um, basically neutralize, you know, ammonia and uh, nitrates, nitrites, and the whole nine yards. It probably won't last 72 hours, but at least 48 maybe, you know, enough to get you through. And then the stress guard just helps the fish. It calms them down. You want an accurate scale because if you're not going to be shipping flat rate prices and you're going to be using different priority boxes, I use 7 by 7 by 6 it's 12 by 12 by... I don't know, tens maybe. Um, I have many different priority boxes, and then I can weigh them and see, you know, once I put everything in there, it might be cheaper to ship them flat rate, depending on how I'm shipping. All right, so anyway, let's, whoops, come on, Scott. Ugh. So anyway, let's get going here. Um, the insulation sheets I buy is right there. Uh, you can um, definitely look through this list, you know, as I've been running my mouth here um you get a six pack of these for like 8.90 at uh lowe's no i'm sorry home depot is where i go um you might find cheaper styrofoam but you know a lot of the things that you insulate walls with and all that are a whole lot more expensive but that's exactly the name of what i use to give you an idea a six pack i can probably make depending on most of my boxes are mediums or priorities. I can probably make hmm, 20, 20 boxes something. So less than a dollar a box, way less than a dollar a box, you know, by the time you add it all up. Um, if you're going to be shipping in the winter, heat packs. Contact Pangea Reptiles. Um, always get the 72-hour heat packs. I experimented with the 40s, the 60s. Problem is they get too hot and they burn out too quick. Uh, the 72 
kind of stays at about 110, 115 degrees, depending on ambient temperature out. Obviously, the colder it is. Um, and you, you want to poke holes in the boxes. But again, that's another video for later on. I'm just trying to get you prepared. Right now, we're in the middle of summer. You don't need freaking heat packs. Shipping bags, you absolutely need a bunch. Okay. Ken's Fish is probably the best place to get them. They're about $4 to $5 per hundred. Um, I like the 4x18s for a trio. Okay. I like the 6x20s for a trio if they're going in the smaller boxes. Um, there's reasons for that. Um, I would recommend probably not putting more than a trio in a bo in a bag. Um, maybe an extra fish. Uh, don't go any more than four, uh, especially when you're at 90 degrees or higher. <clears throat> um, you might be safer around 70, 80. But anyway, that's a good start. Get you, I don't know, 200 of each size. Okay. I also carry seven by tens and. 3 by 12 I, I've got all kinds because maybe I'm shipping snails. Maybe I'm shipping, you know, a replacement fish. Although it's not going to save you on uh, shipping, but we'll get into that. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> uh, conditioners, y'all are probably familiar with Prime and Stress Guard. They're 7 to $14, depends on the size. Whether they're, what, 250 milliliters or 500 or, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I have a video out there that shows how I dose these. It's another video called Shipping Fish, I think. <clears throat> Just look up on how I dose them. People, business cards are cheap. This to print. If you shop around on the internet, you can find it for $9.99. You can find a coupon code. For $9.99, you get like 500 of these things. Um, Y'all probably seen my business cards. I probably should have scanned one. Well, let me quickly... <clears throat> <coughs> I'm on open. There's a quick idea of what mine looks like. Um, let me increase it a little bit. Okay, doesn't have to be fancy. You know, that's my logo. You're going to spend a lot of money on a logo. I'll tell you that right now if you want a good one. Um, there you go. Scott Burton owner. My business number. Again, nobody can contact me on my cell phones. And then a couple links. I... You know, obviously, you're going to go fancytelaquatics.com. I have the domain name registered. I just don't have the website set up yet because I really don't have enough to sell on there. But I want to keep the domain name. So anyway, let's get back to uh, this. Um, I know this is going long. Um, again, a laser printer, bubble jet printer. What I use is Lexmark E342. You can find them pretty darn cheap. You can find replacement toners for like... 200 bucks um I, i'm sorry not 200 uh under 50 bucks maybe 20 30 you know on the secondary market um but whatever you got to have a printer at home to even get started because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of money and time i mean imagine you've got your fish all packed up now you got to go to the post office they got to, you know, and you pay them the money, and then they print off a deal, and you got to put it on there and retape it probably. I, I have no idea how that works. I don't know. And a scale, I use a Smartway Ace 110. They're around 30 bucks on uh, Amazon or wherever. It's pretty darn accurate. I can take the same thing and weigh it 15 times and not even vary by, you know, one little ounce. Um, you know, it's got some bad reviews on it, good reviews. I've not had anything returned yet because, um, you know, I've been off by a pound or been off by six ounces. All right, one second here. All right, where are we at on this? Oh, 13 minutes already. Googly, moogly, let's, let's get going, people. All right, you want to have a backup plan, people, right here. Read everything. What is the Fisher DOA? Um, you're going to be paying postage again. Even if you put in your ad, you're not going to be, um, you won't cover postage. Well, if you got eBay or Aquabin, you want to keep your ratings up, you better believe your sweet butt, you're going to be paying postage. These people are already ticked that they had to wait three days to get the fish. They're dead. Um, you better have a backup plan. Okay? So, Keep in mind that. Um, 
what I mean here when it says, please say you did not sell your only trio. If you've got professional grade fish, okay, and you only got one trio in the tank, don't you dare sell that trio. You got to breed them suckers out. Make sure, one, they're breeding true, okay? You don't want to, I mean, the fish that I'm talking about are not going to ever be under 30 bucks a trio unless you're doing a special. You know what I'm saying? These are not your normal guppies. These are IGFA type guppies, okay? The ones people want that they're going to pay for. You can't make any money selling one and two dollar fish because postage, nobody's going to pay, you know, 15 bucks in postage when they can go down to their local Walmart or Petco or PetSmart and buy the fish, okay? Make sure you've got a good breeding colony. So if I don't have at least a backup trio or two to send in case they arrive dead, then what are you going to do? Now now here's what's going to happen. You're going to refund the customer and say, sorry, I don't have any more fish available, and they're going to give you a negative review, even though you refund their money because you did not give them the product they wanted. So I don't care if you got to spend four or five months breeding out these pure, you know, pure strains to make sure you've got enough to sell. I mean... You know, I've been working on a red albino line since what? Freaking February or March. And they're, uh, you know, and I'm getting a lot of bent spines and that type of thing, having to cull them out. And, you know, I'm, I've, I've sold one trio. I've got one more going out, but there's only about a two trio backup, which means once the next ones go out next week, that line shut down again until I get enough in there. Okay. Now, another thing you want to do. I know they ordered a trio. It is highly recommended by me, and I've been through this. Um, send out oh, one or two extra ones, even if they're nothing but fry, as long as you know they're breeding true. Um, you know, a whole, you know, you could sex a fry once they're four to five weeks old anyway. You'll know if they'll uh, female versus a male. Keep in mind, we're talking about guppies and live bears here, people. Um, you know, it's obviously different with egg layers and, you know, betas maybe or whatever you know i don't know other fish okay you don't want to have to send postage again so in other words if one of the three dies and then now you got to turn around and pay seven or twelve bucks again to ship out one single fish which you're still going to include an extra because what if it dies so keep that in mind it happens um and you know again you're going to have to satisfy the customer um and i've learned this along the way okay Ugh. customers don't want a partial refund. They want the fish. They don't want to be prorated. So in other words, they don't want to be told, I paid $30 for a trio, two of them made it, one didn't. How about I refund you $10? They're going to say, no, send me the other fish. Okay, now, you know, again, we're back in, and now you got to dip in your tank, grab another fish, and pay 7 to 15 bucks to ship it. Okay, what if it dies? You know, again... That's why we want to include an extra or two within reason. Um, and you will lose fish. Because what if USPS messes up? Or you don't pack well enough? Or they crush the box and it leaks? Just be prepared, okay? So you've got to have a backup plan no matter what. No matter what. Um, people want the fish. They don't want money back. They don't want credit on a future... Um, you know, future purchase. Now, that might work great for uh, the wet spot that probably sells two or 3,000 fish a month. That's fine. They, they can afford to bury one or two bad reviews or people blast them on the Internet, um, and they may credit and do all this and that. Uh, I know that they don't cover shipping, you know, allegedly. I don't know what they do in customer service. Never been through them. But just keep it in mind, you're, you're, you know, we're small fry on this end trying to make a buck, you know. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not Flip Aquatics or Aquarium Co-op, even though he doesn't ship fish, all right. Make sure business cards on the inside so they can con contact you. We've already been through there. All right, let's keep rolling here. Now, I'm not going to go through this entire thing. Y'all can pause the screen, look at it. Have a very, very clear shipping policy. You can see my shipping policy all the way from here to here to here. It covers hot weather. It covers cold weather. Down to here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, have a very sheer, uh, clear shipping policy. Um, to break this down in a nutshell, 
Um, now, um, my, here's what my policy is. I only guarantee the fish to arrive live within two hours of the USPS saying it was delivered. That's, you know, probably standard protocol. I'm not going to be responsible if your front porch is 110 degrees, they dropped off the fish at 12 o'clock, and you don't get home from work until 4.30. I hate to say it, but that's not my fault. You know? Well, my fault's also if USPS screws up and loses the fish or kills them, but I still have to, you know, i got to make up for that because that's not the customer's fault either. That's the customer's fault. So, um, and um, I tell them within two hours, I want to see a clear photo of ship, uh, ship, a fish in the bag that are dead, how many lived, blah, blah, blah. Um, I also have shipping policies. I do break these from time to time. I have broken them. Sometimes I paid for it, sometimes I haven't. In cold weather, I typically don't ship below 40. Um, 50 or around 50, I don't include a heat pack. Getting down to 40, <coughs> I'll typically throw a heat pack in there. <coughs> and I definitely don't like to go any lower. Now, keep in mind, and the same with, uh, with heat, I don't like to ship above 90, okay? Now, keep in mind, what I do when a customer, uh, you know, calls me, here's, or, or places an order, let's just put the zip code in for here. You see I use weather a lot. I'll quickly pull up their zip code, and then I'll look at their 10-day weather forecast. Now, I'm in Louisville. This is my zip code. All right, I don't have any days over 90, um, the humidity, you got to worry about that sometimes because that's going to increase the ambient temperature or the, the feel real temperature. But I usually go by this. Look at that. That means I can ship any time, you know, tomorrow or Saturday or Monday or next Tuesday or whatever. Okay. So that's what you want to check. <clears throat> if the person's temperature is going to be, let's say 100 or 105 for the next 10 days, I'll usually tell them I, at this time, uh, you know, I don't want to ship unless they absolutely 100% push it. Usually if they start pushing it, and I've had this happen a couple times because they were going to be in the 105 degree mark because they're in Arizona or whatever, I'm like, all right, here's the deal. I'm going to send them. But, you know, per my shipping policy, if they arrive dead, I am in no way responsible. I don't care. Ship them. Now, also down here, what I've recently done, this is not here in this ad per se, is, um, you know, due to hit, heat wave, no shipping from Louisville, Kentucky to your home. Uh, I, I mistyped it. Um, uh, is over. Uh, over 90 degrees. This is completely mistyped. Zoro, quit. My cat's making noises. Because he, he loves attention. Quit. You can't do that, Booger. I'm, I'm doing a video. Uh, Zoro, his name's Booger because he's just a little booger. <clears throat> no shipping. Um, what this should say is no shipping from Louisville, Kentucky to your residence if you are over 90 degrees is what this should say. So, anyway... Scan through this stuff. I gotta, I gotta get going, man. This is running too long. Um, just have a very, very clear policy. You know, no money. This just covers you, and, and the two-hour window also covers you from little Teddy just put in a brand new tank three days ago. Well, if they arrived alive within the two hours and you put them in your tank and they're dead the next day, how am I supposed to know what your ammonia is? It might be 3.0, and your nitrites might be off the scale. That, that's not my responsibility. I, as long as I'm in my commitment. I would not recommend overnight shipping because first of all, it typically costs more than the fish cost. Okay, let's, let's get going. Oh, it's taking way too long for birthday boy here. Uh, there we go. How to pack. <clears throat> now, there's a very clear picture. You know, that's a styrofoam I buy and you're going to have to do a lot of calculations on a piece of paper, you know, because you got to you got to know this stuff's three quarters of an inch thick. So you got to know if you're putting them wall to wall, you got to subtract an inch and a half. I hope a lot of you pass basic math. 
and understand basic fractions. So you know that, and if you put this in between, you got to subtract three quarter here and three quarter there and make sure you measure. And then you got to remember when you're putting the top on, you know, you've got the bottom as three quarters and the top is three quarters. You know, you, you, you're going to have to do some math. And the best thing to do, I, I wish I had the sheets here, could show them to you. Um, I did a video, um, y'all need to look it up, on how to calculate shipping materials. There's actually a free program you can test out for seven days. As long as you know the four or five packages you're going to use mainly, just program the variables in. I show you how to do every bit of it. And it'll automatically tell you how to get your best cut for the bang out of these sheets, okay? But anyway, very quick. Will the fish bag fit with water? Now, keep in mind, if this is only seven or seven inches, okay, after you subtract three quarters here and three quarters here, what do you got left, people? Basically, five and a half inches. Well, you're not going to fit a seven-inch bag going this way. You know, what you're going to have to do is take one of your, like, um, four by 18-inch bags, fill it, you know, at the very bottom, just barely, ha have enough water for the fish, two-thirds there, you're capping that bag off almost three-quarters of the way down because you want to make sure it's going to fit in here, okay? Now, or you could just buy some smaller bags, maybe buy some four by twelves or whatever <clears throat> again we want um, one third water two thirds air and you got to make sure it's going to fit um did you double bag it make sure you do that you know i use rubber bands and everything i double the ends up um, just remember you add the conditioners and also <clears throat> once you add the bags you want to take them and roll them in newspaper before you pack them in there uh, make sure you put your business card and contact information. Typically, I put it right on top of the top part. I don't tape it down. And then once I put in there and fold the edges of the boxes over, it'll keep the card there. So that way, it's right there on top. They can't miss it. It should not get wet because it's on the very top. Even if a bag slightly leaks, they can get a hold of you. Um, <clears throat> typically, a trio, I do the 7x7x6 seven by seven by priority bag. With a 6x18 bag, I think I talked about that earlier. Um, again, make sure it's going to fit. Do some dry runs. You know, before you even sell fish, you know, act like you're going to package this for a customer. Just bag, you know, a, a bag up with a water only. And act like you're going to ship it to a customer. Now, obviously, you don't tape the whole box down, but make sure the top, you know, fits on. Make sure you can fold the sides over and there's no, you know, it's not sticking up. <clears throat> Make sure the bag fits in there. And once you put the bag in there, then you stuff, you know, newspaper or whatever insulation you're going to use, you know, around it. Make sure there's something on the bottom over top of it. And obviously the bag's wrapped in newspaper. You want to keep this as insulated as possible. <clears throat> okay. So my rule of thumb is a trio can go into 7x7x6. Seven by seven by um, uh, you know, that's just me. Um, uh, in a, um, a medium flat rate... Uh, I could fit about three trios in there using four-inch bags, <clears throat> you know. Um, it's very tough unless you got smaller bags and you're packaging them individually to get more than three trios in a medium flat rate. Again, do a dry run. Make sure that you can do it. And about five trios in a large flat um, flat rate. <clears throat> um, three bags or three fish per bag, two-thirds there. All right. Customer service. Let me. I think I was going to say one thing. Double bag, fit water, ramp. No, maybe not. Okay. Oops. Yeah, we're getting close. Okay. Sold. Did I spell it right? Okay, your sole job is to keep the customer in the know. What I do is as soon as I get an order, and that's anywhere from 5 to 10 a week, which doesn't sound like much, but it's enough to keep me busy and brings money in. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, or sometimes you might get one big order with five trios in there. You know, you. it's a nice seeing a $150 order roll in. <clears throat> the very first thing I do is print off the tracking information. And then what I do is I keep it on the sheet. Um, when mine prints off the uh, label... It takes up half of a eight and a half by eleven paper, and the other half um, there's space to write on. Make sure you write on there 
what day the customer agreed to ship them. I'll get in that in a second. Um, write down exactly what they're getting, you know, and then you take it in your little shipping room. That way, if I pick up a thing and I know it's going to Leo Fio in New York City, um, I quickly look on there and know he's getting one trio of red Russians, two trios of half plaques automatically. And, and before I print off the tracking materials, make sure that the fish are going to fit in the, in the box with the packaging material before you print off the label. Cause it, nothing worse than printing off the label, trying to get a refund, trying to get it canceled. Then they have to credit you back. Don't make that mistake. Again, follow the very first thing. Know a trio will fit in a seven by, you know, no three fish will fit in a medium flat rate. I know that, you know, I'm automatically eating a cost of twelve sixty there, you know, large flat rate. And you might have other priority boxes, but you got to keep in mind weight. <clears throat> you know, once you get up to five trios, you're probably close to five pounds. Again, make sure, you know, from the scale in the beginning, Make sure you know how much the weight is. <clears throat> and then the problem is it depends on the zone. But that's why you look up the guy, you know, look up, you know, where they live at. And you plug in all the parameters. And again, I can get way more detail. <clears throat> so anyway, um, <clears throat> you know, and the very first thing I do is I send them, say, look. <clears throat> well, the first thing I do is ask them. <clears throat> I ship Saturdays, Mondays, Tuesdays. I don't like doing it Wednesdays, but I will do it Wednesdays after I've checked the weather. And I'll say, okay, your next available two dates are, you know, Saturday, August uh, 18th. I have no idea. I'm, I'm not looking at the... Oh, and it actually is the 18th. Googly, googly. Uh, Saturday, I'll ship two-day priority to arrive. <clears throat> priority is always, usually two days, sometimes three. But 95% of the time, two days. Then it'll arrive... Uh, Monday the uh, 20th, or if you prefer, I'll ship Monday the 20th to end up there Wednesday the 22nd, or Tuesday the 21st to end up the 23rd, and sometimes Wednesday the 24th. you got to be careful once you get into Wednesday, and the reason being, because what if it takes three days? What's well, Saturday? Well, sometimes hubs like Austin might take four days. You, so if you're going to Austin or a major, major city, you probably don't want to do it on Wednesday because then what happens? <clears throat> well, they obviously can't deliver on Sunday. Now it sits till Monday. Now you basically ship the fish on the 22nd, one, two, three, four, five days. Not good, people. It's not good for uh, fish, especially in uh, in winter time or uh, summertime. They might be all right in the spring and the fall if you're staying around 70. They, they can, I've had them, I had one delayed up to a week, and they made it, okay? But again, that's, make sure you got a backup plan. All right, real quick, um, uh, we've already explained PayPal covers packages and flat rate, so you get the commercial rate if you print off at home. If you're using uh, eBay, <clears throat> oh, here's another thing. Don't ever, if you, if you sold on eBay, and they contact you, don't put, anything in the email to them say what day would you like me to ship you know blah 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 get back with me thanks scott from fancy tail aquatics look forward to hearing from you <clears throat> don't put your phone number in there don't put your address information in there because ebay thinks you're trying to get around them <coughs> excuse me they think you're trying to get around them by simply providing alternate information i got a warning on there one time and it said it wouldn't ding my account, but do not continue forward. So I was telling the guy, uh, he wanted more fish than what he had ordered. And at the time, I was actually making people pay postage, which I don't do anymore. I'll explain that real quick. Um, I was like, look, just call me, and I'll figure out what you want, and then I'll just add them in there. eBay had nothing. No, that, that wasn't cool. Basically, eBay's response is uh, no personal communications. They want you, the customer, to go back and buy your other auctions. You know, and if you're making them pay for shipping, and you didn't figure the cost of shipping into into free shipping, then then you host yourself. You know, now you've got extra boxes because of what they're wanting to order. I hope that makes sense. So that's why you put your business card in there. That way. Hopefully, they'll contact you through email. Um, 
your personal business phone number and other means. And that way, if they contact, or you can even write on the back of the card, um, it, which I, I don't have two-sided printing. I showed you all my business card. Right on there, contact me directly for cheaper rates. So maybe you can knock 2 or $3 off a trio for whatever else, you know? So blah, blah, blah. That's kind of why. And plus, you want to avoid the eBay fees. And here's why I do free shipping. Um, figure out what is the cheapest you can take on a trio. You know your minimum shipping cost is going to be seven dollars to normally thirteen. Okay. Um, the reason being, eBay charges extra if you charge shipping. Number one, eBay will actually ding you more money because not only do you got to pay the eBay fees, if they see you paid twelve fifty shipping, now they want a three or four percent cut of that. If you put in free shipping, you don't have to pay them anything. This doesn't really apply, uh, uh, apply an aqua bid, obviously. There's no fees there and this and that. <clears throat> um, another reason I played around it with forever, I man, people don't even want to pay, you know, thirty dollars plus two ninety nine shipping. They don't. There's a lot of people at the very, very top of the page is going to hit lowest cost, including shipping. They want free shipping, people. So, you know, I know that you're included in there. So even though you might be charging, let's say you're charging $4, uh, $40 a trio, you're not getting $40 a trio. Um, because that trio, well, you're going to pay $7 on shipping. So really you're getting $33 for them. But if you were going to sell them for 30 anyway, see, you're still coming out a little bit ahead there on $7, uh, which is normal for the 7x7x6s. Seven by seven by um, you, you've got to plan it out. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up. I probably bored y'all crapless, and this is going to take forever to render and load up. That's really about it. You've got to learn all of these mistakes and, and, and things that could possibly happen. Be prepared for them and know what's going to happen. I'll give you two real quick stories if you've even stayed here this long. <clears throat> Last week, a guy <clears throat> called me and said, uh, uh, you, I sent him three trios. Uh, two trios of half flax and a trio of, uh, I forget, maybe Moscow's. I don't remember it. But anyway, <clears throat> I included an extra fish of the half flax in each, in each bag and included <clears throat> two extra Moscow's. Uh, and usually when I include extras, they're normally not adults. They're usually, you know, uh, mid-teens, you know, uh, four to eight weeks to 12 weeks, whatever, just to cover <clears throat> anything lost. And uh, <clears throat> I said, okay, that's fine. Um, I, and here's what you do. You don't ask them what they want, <clears throat> what they want to do. What you do is say, and see, I wrote down on that piece of shipping, you know, when I shipped to him, I wrote down one bag of half blacks, four fish. One bag of half blacks, four fish. I sell everything by trio, so I know I included extras. Then I wrote down purple, blue, Moscow's, five. Well, again, I sell everything by trios. So you can't buy a single fish from me or add an extra male or female. I just do my trios. So I said, well... I said, I sent you a total of eight half blacks, right? He goes, yeah. I said, okay. Uh, I said, I sold you six, right? He goes, yeah. I said, six survived then, right? Yeah. I said, okay. I followed through my end of the bargain. You paid for six, you got six. If you if the other two had lived, you'd have got extras, and that was a bonus. And I said, on top of that, I sent you five Moscow's, uh, blue-purple Moscow's, I think that's what it was, when you paid for three and I sent you two extras and they lived, right? He goes, yeah. I said, well, I'll be honest with you. I went through, uh, you know, I followed my bar, you know, my deal. I went, I sold you what you got and um, you didn't get cheated on anything. I said, I'm sorry if the extras basically have lived, you got a couple extra free ones. You paid for six, you got six, you paid for three, and you got five. So that's why it's important. Um, and then uh, about f a month ago, or two months ago, this girl called me in a panic. You sent me four fish. She ordered two bags of um, whatever it was. I don't remember. Two trios, basically. You sent me only four fish. There's like two males and two females in the bag. So I went and pulled up 
her uh, you know receipt and I wrote down two bags of half blacks, four in each bag. I said, uh, where are you at? She goes, I'm at the grocery. I said, how far did you look through that box? I said, there were two bags in there. I know for a fact there were two bags. That's what I have written down. She's like, oh my God, let me rush home and check. Sure enough, she had let this other bag sit in the box for, uh, I, I don't know, hours and hours on end, which is no big deal. It was inside the house. I knew they wouldn't be dead. But, it, it, but the, here's the thing. Because I didn't respond to her right away, she sent like eight or nine instant messages. Man, I hope people understand we don't sit here all day long waiting for sales and waiting for, uh, you know, I'm not a full-time business at this, you know. I don't I don't have a department to, you know, scan business emails and uh, frustrated peers. You better get a hold of me, blah, blah, blah. She, she ended up looking like an idiot, and she knew it, you know, <clears throat> that... Acting like I wasn't going to get back with her and report me to eBay or something. And I'm like, just calm down. There, there's another bag in there. So the last thing in mind you all might want to do is, and I probably should do the same, especially if you don't do a lot of fish sales per week. Um, you know, before you put the top cover on, you might want to take a digital photograph or two showing that you did you know and hold up their label next to the box you know with the with the bags in there showing that hey this is what went in there that could be a good recourse for you luckily i write everything down uh i double check it before i tape it up at the end and blah 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 so again be prepared for all that stuff whoops that's the end people um okay that's it i, I wasted almost a half hour of your all's time um Scott with Fancy Tail Aquatics. Happy birthday to me, and I hope you any of this information becomes useful. I try to get through it as quick as I could. So, thanks everybody. Y'all have a blessed day. Laters.